Good afternoon. It's a real joy again to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know that you are as anxious as I am for Thursday to come along because the time when we can connect together and have wonderful fellowship. So I just want to greet you in that name and I hope that you have been doing your best to conform to the different instructions washing your hands, stay home, do what you should do, and to make sure that we keep this thing under control. It is true, while we believe what the Bible says, that no plague will come nigh our dwelling, we have a responsibility, and that is to take precautionary measures and to behave responsibly, and not to be using our faith in God as a cloak of maliciousness to violate very principled issues of hygiene. So again, call your friend. Let them know that the Rhema Hour is on the air right now, whether on your platform of your YouTube or your whatever you are looking at. On your Samsung phone, look at it in the t on the TV, in the laptop, and uh, different things. So I really want to thank God for each of you. Again, I want to just salute all of you who have been responding, who have been expressing how much the blessings this have been to you. We don't take these things for granted, and we are so thankful that we are reaching people whom we would not have ordinarily reached had it not been for this pandemic that we are facing. We are in this together, and you know, it is such a wonderful thing to recall that what the enemy might have meant for bad, God turns it around for good. And the same God of yesteryear is the same God of today. So may God bless you, people of Rhema. We ask you to keep in touch. We are so thankful for the different activities where we have been Zooming, having prayer meetings, having Bible study. It is a wonderful, refreshing thought that we can keep in touch. We thank God for technology. And I trust that we will be able to maximize everything. Now, when it is all over, that we'll actually be using additional methods and means that we might not have actually even thought about. So this is the Rhema Hour. And we have been talking about Psalm 27. I never envisage that we would have been still dealing with that psalm. When I began a few weeks ago talking about the Lord is my light, it was my intention just to have just one installment and to share with you the thought of the devotional. But as we continue week after week, I am amazed at the expansion that has been brought into the equation that God has allowed us to see things we might have never seen and I can't promise you that this afternoon will be the end of it all. We will continue indefinitely. And I want to begin this afternoon by reading the psalm again. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We have done the Lord is my light. We have done the Lord is my salvation. And we are going to deal with today, the Lord is the strength of my life. It is very significant of the different formation of the sentence that David actually employed. It might look as a little bit inconsequential, but it is very, very important to observe. Have you observed? He began by saying, the Lord is my light, the Lord is my salvation. But when they come to the other line, he said, the Lord is the strength of my life. He is the strength of my life. And I want you to just simply ponder that for a few seconds. Because there is a deep-seated thought in that statement. The Lord is the strength of my life. What he is saying is the Lord is the one who gave legitimacy and credence to my life. When I look at my life as it is today, he's saying, 
It is because of the Lord. All the varied encounters and the varied experiences I might have encountered, my life still is intact, and it is because the Lord is my life. I just want to spend some time and try to sensitize you to what David was saying. And I want to ask you to see if you can make any connection in your own experience. When you look at your life, do some reminiscing right now and think for maybe five years back or maybe 10 years back of the experiences you might have gone through. When it seems as if everything around you was dark, when there seemed to have been no way out, and when you could not have envisaged that there is a solution and you despaired about the future, you despaired even for your own safety, you despaired for your own life. But here you are today, well and strong, alive, in control of your faculties. You will say, my goodness, the only reason why I'm here today, enjoying life, and I've come through victoriously, and I was able to come through the dangers and the snares and the hopelessness, it was because of the Lord. And even today, I'm facing certain circumstances. I'm in a certain condition of a predicament, and I'm still able to stand. Why? It's because the Lord is my strength. You know, I was thinking sometimes when we're not facing certain circumstances, we say to ourselves, if I am to ever face that, I could never make it. And guess what? As time goes on, a circumstance may arise about the same thing that you despair of if it were to occur. And you who thought you could not have made it, you made it. Let me give you a personal example here as a means of a testimony. I used to be saying, God help me never to come to a point in my life where I have to face the fact that my mother is dying or that she is dead. I said, I just simply would not be able to stand that. But I tell you, beloved, a few years ago, my brother in England called me. I had just come from church the Sunday afternoon, and I was just taking off my clothes and so on, and we were about to sit down to have dinner or lunch, whatever you call it. And the phone rang. It was my brother from London. And he asked me, he said, how are you doing? What are you doing right now? Are you sitting down? I said, yes. He said, well, I have some news for you. Mom has just passed. The victim of a heart attack. It has just happened. Not, not a matter of seconds away. And I, I call you right away. And he said, Elmo, you have to come to take care of the funeral. No, I, I, I could not believe what I was hearing. At the point of when he broke the news, I became almost numb. I became, I don't understand. And somehow, I did not collapse. I did not break down. I did not lose my, my mind. I began to make plans right away. And in a matter of two days, I was on a plane going to London. And they were waiting on me because they said, you are the high priest of the family. You are the one who we are depending upon to preach at the funeral and to commit her body to the grave and things like that. And beloved, I stood in that church in London and I conducted the service for my mother. I preached a sermon. People were blessed, went to the cemetery. I officiated at the graveside funeral service and saw my mother's body committed to the ground. And it was as if I were a giant. I went back to my sister's home, and quite a few friends were there from the parts of St. Vincent, whom I hadn't seen for years since in primary school days. And the member, they said to me, you are something else. How in the world could you be so strong 
to preach that powerful message in the church and then to commit your mother to the ground. Boy, you're not human. <laughs> and I myself was shocked because I said, guys, the only reason why I was able to do that was because of the Lord who strengthened me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is what I'm talking about. The Lord is the strength. And when I look back at the whole scenario now, I attribute the whole thing to a fact that the Lord was and still is the strength of my life. So God, Jesus, is the one. He was saying that it's Psalmist David who gave legitimacy and who gave credence to my life. I don't take any marks for myself. I don't take any credit to myself. I owe it all to the Lord. Now, later on, a guy called Paul the Apostle, he made a profound statement. He said, for to me, to live is Christ. For to me, to live is Christ. What you're saying, and I want to share with you two aspects of this statement. One, we can look at the punctuation. It could be saying, for example, for to me, to live is Christ. In other words, what he's saying by that, the incentive for my living is Christ. He is the reason I want to live. He is the object or the goal of my living. For to me, to live is Christ. Had it not been for Christ, I had no interest in living. He is the only reason why living makes any sense. Then the second part of it, you can change the punctuation mark. And he says, for to me to live, for to me to live is Christ. In other words, the only reason why I was able to live the life I'm living now is because of Christ. Given all the different scenes of life, given the challenges, I am sustained by Christ. He is the one who makes living meaningful and possible. Had it not been for Christ, I could not have made it. And the psalmist says something like this. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This same psalm, 27 and verse 13. And in subsequent installment, I will come back to that. And this gives some legitimacy to what he's saying here, the psalmist. For the Lord is my strength. And I want to spend the time trying to share that with you. To make you further appreciate what David was saying, we need to understand the meaning of the word strength in the Hebrew. As I looked and researched it, I became amazed at the number of times that the word strength is mentioned in the Bible in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. But I have chosen two of the renditions to try to bring out what was the thing in the mind of the psalmist. The first one is found in the, our text, Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is the strength. The word used there in the Hebrew is maoz, M-A-W-Z. Or we say Z in the British, and we say Z in, 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 in the American. But it's spelled M-A-O-W-Z. It means maoz. It means a fortified place. It means a defense. It means a stronghold. So in Maos, what the psalmist was saying, the Lord is my fortified place. The Lord is my defense. The Lord is my stronghold. Powerful. The only reason why I am here today, he's saying, is because I have a fortress, a place that is so fortified, that in spite of the banging and the bombardment that may come from the battling of the enemy, 
I am still standing. I have a defense. I'm surrounded. It was no marvel, therefore, that he wrote later on, of the mountains are round about Jerusalem. So the Lord encamped round about the people even forevermore. He understood that. The stronghold. He is the one who I can depend upon. The one who gives me the strength. He is saying the Lord is my strength. Then the other reference I want to share with you to understand the word strength is from Psalm 118 and verse 14. It says, the Lord is my strength and song, and it become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song, and it become my salvation. The word there is O's, O-Z-E, and it means boldness. Let me stop there for like a while. Boldness. In other words, I don't have to bow my head and bite my fingernails in being ashamed or being overwhelmed by the adversary. I can be bold. I can be bold like a lion. No one scares me. No one gets me ashamed to apologize for being a Christian, for being a, a servant of God. It also means praise. That's why I said that he become my song. In the time of trouble, he hides me in his pavilion. He set me upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies round about me. You remember these guys, Paul and Silas, in the midst of the beating they got, their backs are bleeding, and they are in stocks. At midnight, they sang praises unto God. He has become my song. And the only reason why I can sing in the time of trouble, I can sing in the darkest night, I can sing when things are negative, is because the Lord is my strength. He is my majesty. You know what? I can celebrate. I don't have to wait until the, the storm is over. I am not regulated by my circumstance when things are bad. I become in a doldrum. When things are bright, I become hilarious. No, I can maintain my majestic beauty at all times, my majestic celebration at all times. Why? Because the Lord is my strength. And he said, the Lord is my power. <laughs> that is what it meant by strength, O's, boldness, security, praise, majesty power so here beloved i want to emphasize again what i've done for the past two three weeks is that the lord is not becoming that the lord will not become that the lord never used to be that the lord is what the psalmist wants us to emphasize is in your present scenario you ought to understand that the Lord is your song, that the Lord is your refuge, that the Lord is your fortified place, that the Lord is your defense, that the Lord is your stronghold, that the Lord is your praise. Let me stop a little while upon the word praise there. Remember the word praise comes from the word oz, which is one of the renditions of the word strength. You are not to adopt the attitude that when things are not going right for you, you walk around like if you just suck a thousand sour lemon. You lose your joy. You lose the countenance of your face. When the Bible makes it quite clear that the Lord is the light of your countenance, whatever happens to you, beloved, God does not change. He is the light of your countenance. He is your joy. He is your peace. He is your fulfillment. He is your praise. And we praise the Lord at all times. The Bible declares in everything, give thanks. You don't give thanks for everything, but in everything, in the midst of it all, 
in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the flood, you give thanks, you magnify, you lift up your voice and you praise God. That's why Paul Right into the Ephesian church says, You ought to make melody in your heart unto God, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And this goes right back to Psalm 27. The Lord is my strength. It has some credence. It can't be doubted. It is factual. Hear what David says. We have just read it. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. That's Psalm 28 and verse 7. They said in Psalm 31 and verse 4, He pulled me out of the net that my enemies are spread for my feet, for thou art my strength. In Psalm 46, he says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And Psalm 118, I have just read to you while ago in verse 14. The Lord is my strength and my song, and it has become my salvation. Isaiah behold, said, behold, in Isaiah 12 and verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. The word you there is O's, O-Z-E. The word is saying, God is my strength. And I want you to know, beloved, that that strength is available. It's not something like in a museum. They can go there and visit once in a while. It's not something that you put in your diary that used to be many years ago. It is available. It is made to us as a promise. In the book of Psalm 29 and verse 11, the psalmist says, The Lord will give strength unto his people. Are you a person who belongs to God? Are you one of his people? If the answer is yes, he said, the Lord will give strength unto the people. You may be saying, Pastor Tony, I cannot hold out any longer. I don't know how much resilience I have. I don't know how much patience I may have. I just feel like letting go. I feel so weak. I feel so helpless. I feel so hopeless. Well, beloved, hold on to the promise of God. The Lord will give strength. Is your faith weak? Is your dependence on God seem to be running out? He will give strength to you. You have not got to throw in the towel. You have not got to quit. The Lord will give strength. And that means you, at this point in time, you appropriate the strength of the Lord. That's why the Bible declares in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 29, the way of the Lord is strength to the upright. What God is saying here, if you take another way that's contrary to be strong, you are out of the way of the Lord. You are not, beloved, to make excuses why you are fatigued, in your faith in God, you ought not to make excuses and to justify that you have all right to be weak and have all right to be discouraged and have all right to be despondent and have all right to be oppressed. No, you don't have to make that excuse because the Bible says he gives you strength. The Bible declared in Isaiah 40 and verse 29, he gave it power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Have you heard that? Those who have no might, he increases strength. The Lord is your strength. The Bible declared, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I'm not trying to talk to you to talk down to you. I have my both feet on the ground, my 
head is not in cloud nine. I'm a real person. I am rational. I am sober. And I know that sometimes life can be so cruel. Life can be so hard. Life can be so despairing to the point where we try to analyze and there seems to be no light at the end of the tunnel. And God is not going to condemn you for that. Matter of fact, he gave you his word that if the time ever comes when you have no might, what does he do? He gives power to the faint. Thank God for that. Are you on the verge of fainting? Don't condemn yourself. Don't feel that you're worthless. Don't feel that God is going to dump you somewhere in the forgotten land. He said to those who have no strength, he increases strength. And to those who have no power, he gives them might. That means you, beloved, you are catered for. God has a plan for you. And it is for you to be able to access the strength. You are not like people who have no hope. You are not like people who don't believe in God. This is why you are saved. You have received salvation for a time like this. Salvation will worth you nothing in heaven. Oh, you the pastor, you're talking heresy. Oh, no, I'm not talking heresy. Salvation will be worth you nothing in heaven. In heaven, we don't need it again. We are saved forevermore. <laughs> Salvation is for you upon the face of the earth to live, to access the strength of the Lord, to access the victory, to access the provision, to access the health, to access the might. That is what salvation is about. Boldness, prosperity, health, strength, everything, overcoming. That is what salvation, deliverance. And therefore, if you're saved, you are different from the unsaved. You have a hope. You have a strength. You need to tap into the strength. The Lord is the strength of my life. Paul prayed for the Corinthian church. In first in Corinth, sorry, the Ephesian church in chapter 3 and verse 16. He prayed among other things that you may be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. He is praying for the church that my prayer, since I heard about your faith in God and your love to all the brethren, my prayer to God has always been that you will be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. To the Colossian church, he said, that they be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. So God doesn't want you to be weak. God doesn't want you to throw in the towel. You can be strengthened. You can tap into. You can access the strength. You are not just to read the Bible and admire the strength of David, admire the strength of Samson, admire the strength of Gideon, admire the strength of Paul and Silas, admire the strength of Joshua. No, beloved, you can have it. You are not saved to be a spectator of others. You are not there to coordinate the effort of others and just to become a spectator, a fan of them. You are to partake of the same thing. The way Paul declared in the book of Hebrews, saying therefore that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the rest. Thank God for the Moses. Thank God for the Abraham. Thank God for the Gideon. Thank God for the Jephthahs. Thank God for the Samuel and the, all these mighty men, the Elijah. Thank God for them. But God is saying, you don't just simply stay there as an admirer. You become a participator. You can look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. The Bible declares, we are to lay aside every weight. One of the first things you need to do 
in accessing the strength of the Lord is to make sure that your confession is right. The Bible declares in the book of Joel chapter 3 and verse 10, Let the weak say, I am strong. I love that. The weak doesn't say, oh God, you know how weak I am. I am so weak and so lowly. No, let the weak say, I am strong. The Bible says, speak the very opposite. Speak the answer. Speak the solution. Speak the way out. You do not confess what, is you, what you don't want. You don't confess the weakness. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. This is not psychology. This is faith in God. Because God is saying, He is your strength. He is your victory. He is your boldness. He is your power. He is your strong tower. He is your mighty fortress. A mighty fortress is your God. Secondly, clothe yourself properly. Paul is talking to the Ephesian church. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord, not in your feeling, not in your philosophy, not in your psychology, not in your ability to psychoanalyze things. Be strong in the Lord. The Lord is your strength. And he told them, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God. Clothe yourself with the girdle of truth for your loins. Clothe yourself with the breastplate of righteousness. Clothe yourself with your feet shod with the gospel. Clothe yourself with the shield of faith. Clothe yourself with the helmet of salvation. Arm yourself with the sword of the Spirit, which is God's Word, and be praying incessantly and constantly watching for what God will do. Ezekiel declared, I will put myself upon the watch and wait to hear what he will say unto me. Last of all, be patient, beloved. Be patient. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength Many times the word wait there, it means to patiently expect, to have patient expectation. Don't tell yourself, well, this thing is going to end now, or my circumstance wouldn't end now. I don't know how it's going to fan out. I don't know how it's going to work out. And you decide to stop living. I said, no. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew. And the word wait there come from the word in the Hebrew kavan or kava, which means to expect patiently. Confidence in God. Wait upon God. Your ways are not his ways. Your thoughts are not his thoughts. What may seem to be a thousand years to you, it's like a whisk of your eyelash to the Lord God. Men become impatient, but God is not impatient. God will perfect that which concerns you, beloved. It might be dark now, but after every dark night, it must give way to a glorious dawn. And the darkest hour of the night is that hour just before dawn. You might not be able to decipher how you're going to get out of where you are. But as you put your trust in God, you can chorus the same words of the Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. And I believe that as you learn to wait upon him, it's a be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. What David is saying, as you wait upon God, the strength will come. Strength for today and a bright hope for tomorrow is what God has laid down in his word. God is saying, wait. 
and David saying, Wait, I say. In other words, if he were a trini, he would have said, If I say so, it's so. If I say so, you could take it, man. If it is coming from me, you can take it. Why? Because he went through the mill. He went through the grind. He knew what it was to come to a dead end street. He knew what it was to be compassed about with all type of setback. And one time he said, by my God, I leaped over a wall. By my God, I ran through a troop. <laughs> when there's no way, beloved, if there is no way, if all the roads are blocked, by the grace of God, you can leap over any wall. Therefore, you are not to give up. Trust in the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And while you're waiting, you don't begin to grumble. While you're waiting, you're not grumpy. While you're waiting, you are not disagreeable. While you're waiting, you are not bitten up. While you're waiting, you are not sour. While you are waiting, you are not disconsolate. While you're waiting, you are courageous. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. And I believe, beloved, God calls you to be on this platform this afternoon to hear a word like this. And I want you to know it is not over. I mean the eight day, not the COVID-19. I mean your situation, your victory. It is coming. It may not be tonight, but it is coming. It might not be tomorrow, but it is coming. Because remember, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. The time will come when in this same psalm, you will be able to select David. He set me upon a rock. And now my head is lifted up above my enemies round about me. What I will do? I will sing praise. I will sing honor and glory unto God. For he is the strength of my life. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for everyone who views this message today that the hand of God shall be upon them. And somehow, Father, there will be a quickening sensation of the reality of the workability of what we have shared. Those who are hopeless, Lord, let hope be born in their heart one more time. Those who are weak, Lord, increase their strength. And those who have never known you, let the Holy Spirit, let them understand that they can accept you now as their Savior and Lord. I break every fetter. I dismantle every obstacle and declare that there is victory. For where there seems to have been no way, Lord, you have opened up the way. And for this we give you thanks in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. I believe that God has spoken to you. We would like to hear from you. And as you look at the bottom of your screen, there is information there as to how you can contact us. Rama, may God bless you. Hold on there. Keep on what you're doing. Keep on the zooming. Keep on the fellowship. And begin to build up one another. For we all belong to one great family. The family of God. May God bless you and keep you until next time.